Hello everyone, uh, a very good morning. My name is Rakesh Karthik Ketanidi and I work at a company called Robert Bosch. Uh, so today in today's session I will be explaining uh, about introduction, a brief introduction of IoT and uh, I will uh, give a small demo using uh, IoT and a couple of sensors and we will see how to, uh, how to send signals to the sensor from PowerShell. Uh, and we will see a couple of, uh, if, if time permits, we will see a couple of options of uh, connecting the sensors. One using a breadboard and one using a, a ready-made kit called GroupI, which uh, yeah, which we can buy in the market. Yeah. So let's start with the presentation. So what is IoT? Does anyone need an introduction to IoT? Everyone here knows about what IoT is. Can I proceed? With the next slide, or anyone wants me to explain this? Feel free. Okay, cool. Yeah, so moving on to the next slide, this is the Raspberry Pi, which uh, I'll be using in my demo today. So these are various components here. So uh, basically, if you are new to IoT and uh, new to Raspberry Pi, you can think of it as a mini computer, uh, which has a Wi Fi connection in it, the Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, you can connect to uh, various sensors here, uh, you know, using the GPIO ports. And uh, you have USB cables from which you can connect your mouse and keyboard. Uh, yeah, and uh, there is a SD card slot where you can, you know, put in your SD card and boot up the OS. Yeah, and uh, various other things. And uh, these are the sensors that uh, you know, we could use uh, and these are actually uh, manufactured by company. I mean, the, the ones which are shown here are from uh, GroupPi sensors. So uh, we have sensors uh, which can do the motion detection, light sensors, sound detection, and uh, you know, there are uh, various other sensors like the humidity, temperature, you know, a lot of uh, use cases. And uh, uh, so using these sensors, we can easily connect uh, to the Raspberry Pi using uh, uh, Groove's own uh, uh, kit. So this is the board where we can actually connect these sensors to and this board will be mounted on top of the Raspberry Pi. So if you see there are two boards here, Raspberry Pi is at the below and it is actually connected to the Groove Pi module and this can be connected to the sensors using some wires. If we don't use the Groove Pi kit, the connections would look a bit messy, you know, something like this. So we will use motherboard or some other circuit connection and we will see the uh, wires connecting directly to the board. Yeah. So in my demo today, uh, yeah. so uh, I will just explain how uh, I actually deployed my application, I want the application into the Raspberry Pi. And uh, then we will see some PowerShell commands to actually control it. Yeah. So, uh, firstly, uh, these are the steps to uh, create applications, you know, which you can deploy onto the uh, Raspberry Pi. First thing is you need to have, uh, so all the steps that I am referring to here are uh, uh, to use the applications for the Microsoft, you know. Uh, so, we are using all Microsoft technologies here. So for starting with the Visual Studio, you need to have Visual Studio 2015 and above. And uh, you need, to, while installing it, make sure to select the UWP, Universal Windows uh, Apps, and the IoT SDK. So those are the requirements. And once you download it, you can actually download some samples. I, uh, for my demo, I downloaded a sample from this link. And uh, then, because I'm using the group, I am actually adding the uh, you get package. Uh, so I just install the command install package group I. If I have to use the group I, if I don't use it, then I don't need that step. And uh, 
then I would actually need to go to the properties of my project and uh, set the device target device as the remote device because uh, my application I do not want to run it on my local computer I want to run it on the Raspberry Pi so I am setting the target device as the remote device and I would select the remote device as my Raspberry Pi so uh, so there basically we need to provide the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and select yeah so this is the basic setup of uh, creating an application and running it on the Raspberry Pi itself any any doubts okay so then uh, we will talk about uh, powershell on iot so before going there i will quickly show a demo uh, yeah so as i said i have uh, my uh, raspberry pi here and it is connected uh, to a uh, uh, to an LED on my uh, breadboard okay and uh, my Raspberry Pi has a display here where uh, I could see in this monitor so uh, actually Microsoft uh, has provided uh, a dashboard site website wherein we can actually see what is happening I mean we can control the Raspberry Pi uh, applications from the site itself I'm going to open that now So, So I guess, uh, can you guide me to the site, please? Yeah, the site where uh, we could actually install the OS and, uh, and from where we could the dashboard site. Or let me open the site from, this. Mm -hmm. from where we download the setup site. Oh, it's it's okay. Let me uh, just show the setup directly. So uh, when we search about uh, the Windows IoT code, right? So uh, this is the site that is provided by Microsoft. You can see developer.microsoft.com. And uh, so uh, when we are creating IoT applications, this is the first step to do. You know, first we go to this site and then download something called a dashboard, right? When I download the dashboard, a setup file will be downloaded. Let me quickly do that. And I just run it. And uh, if, if I'm installing the operating system for the first time, then what I need to do is I would have, uh, you know, I, I need a small SD card and uh, I would insert that 
into the bigger SD card slot and put it in my computer. And from there, uh, in, in the same site which we have seen now, uh, so right now it is actually showing my Raspberry Pi because it is already there. Okay, if I if I have to install the OS for the first time, right? In that side, we would see these options. So I can select the Raspberry Pi model here, and we can also use some other you know boards, alternatives for Raspberry Pi, and which I will be. I mean, what is the OS I want to build, and then the drive, and the name and password. So all these things I can set up. I can give the Wi-Fi uh, if if it is available, and then I click download and install. After I do this, then the installation actually starts, which means the IoT core OS will be installed onto that SD card. Then we take that OS and put it in the Raspberry Pi, and thus we can actually boot the Raspberry Pi with the OS. So I have already done those things. So in in my current example here, once once we do that and connect the Raspberry Pi to the internet, right? How how do I do that? Is uh, uh, once you in install the OS, you will be able to boot. You will be able to boot the whole thing, and then uh, you will see the display. You know, it would have some small display like this. And here in the settings, you can actually see the Wi-Fi connections. Right. Which one? Uh, no, actually, that came with the group uh, kit. So it, it, it just yeah it's just a simple LCD screen. Even if I do not have the display, right, nothing is going to impact me because there is not much functionality in here. Like circuit so was saying, saying we can actually control a lot of things from the dashboard that Microsoft provides. You can see that, right? Yeah, Without at least. Device. Yeah, we would see it's booted, but uh, we can also see if it's booted, then it will show in my devices here. So I could even actually see from here. So right now, uh, because it's booted and connected to the Wi-Fi and all, it, it is actually visible here. So I just can right-click on it and open in the device portal. So then it opens this portal here, which has a lot of functionalities. You know, uh, so here I can actually go to my apps, and it is showing all the applications that are already installed in my Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So how, how did I uh, actually deploy the applications? Uh, you, you can relate to the previous slide that I was talking about, the Visual Studio, and we, we create an application. Actually, there are a lot of samples that are available in Internet GitHub, and the samples which which I'm using, uh, that those were from uh, GrowPy site that I, I have the link for. And once you have the uh, samples downloaded Visual Studio, then you can actually deploy it onto the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is actually a dashboard given by Microsoft. It, it just uh, kind of interacts with your Raspberry Pi. That's the Raspberry Pi. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an you can say it's an application. Yes, that that's right. Okay. 
okay. So uh, here I have a lot of applications here. So right now we are going to execute the PowerPy application. Okay, so my app is already there. So let me go to PowerShell. Uh, yes, PowerPy app is written in C-sharp. Yeah, it is C-sharp application. Uh, it, it has some DLLs. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to actually uh, control the DLL, I mean, pass signals to the DLL from, from PowerShell. Okay, so this is my PowerShell screen. So uh, we will uh, see how I can actually connect it to the device in the in the later on slides. So right now you can assume that I'm already connected to the device, this the device IP, and I'm at this folder script. Yeah. Let me actually uh, take the path from my text file which I already have here. Let me just copy paste it. Oops. Uh, first I just want to make sure I am still, okay the connection is not active that is the problem. Let me quickly connect to the device. actually uh, creating a remote PowerShell session to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now it is connected. Yeah, I see the host name. Yeah, so it is printing something. So now, uh, let me just uh, reduce the font size a bit so that commands can be seen a bit better. So what, what I am doing now is uh, I am actually adding the 
powerpy library dot dll uh, i'm basically loading that into the powershell right powershell session okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a couple of other commands which will enable the uh, connection to the devices basically creating process what does it say exception calling sorry oh okay 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 Maybe I have executed the command already, so let me skip this part. Dollar okay. Ivo helper. Let me just uh, close the PowerShell and open a new session. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's my local session actually. Ah, uh, yeah, it should be. doing is I'm uh, passing my credentials and creating an object first administrator so these are the steps that we do for when we are doing powershell remote okay. now i would say enter the session connected now okay so now i'm adding the dll again mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay. let me navigate to the path first yep. okay now let me execute my command 
Oh yeah. Okay, let me run the next command. Dollar IO value equal to inject Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm getting some uh, new issue now for some reason. Uh, so let me skip this. Okay, skip this part and uh, let's go ahead with the rest of the presentation. Hmm? Uh, what would actually happen is uh, after running these two commands, then I would uh, run uh, another command. Uh, which will basically make the LED glow. So the command would look something like this. Yeah. So the I O helper, I, I I would just uh, create an object, and uh, then when I run this command, I O helper dot pin equal to I would set the value to high or low. Yeah. To to control. The, yeah, the sensors. We can basically send signals to the sensors and make, make them and control them basically. So if I give low, then it would make it glow. If if it is, I mean high would be low, and if I make it high, then it will glow, and if I make it low, it will switch off. Yeah. And we can also run a uh, loop and make it blinking, like you know, on and off and on and off that kind so of. Stuff. Uh, uh, not uh, we have not created any profile. But you can. Yeah, we could. I think so. Yeah. And yeah, it is using PowerShell Core. Uh, let me go back to my presentation quickly, and uh, we will go some basic commands uh, that are useful for the IoT stuff. But right now, we have tried to see how to control uh, uh, the target devices and. Uh, we will also see some of the interesting commands that are there. Okay. Uh, so, firstly, whenever we are trying to, now we will see how to connect, uh, how, how to uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi from PowerShell, right. First thing is you need to launch the PowerShell as administrator on your local machine and then uh, start the Windows remote management and uh, add the Raspberry Pi as a trusted host. After that, you uh, run the command enter PS session, give the computer the name of the Raspberry Pi and the credential in the credential object. Uh, so, these are basically uh, you know simple steps to do uh, PowerShell remoting onto any machine. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, those. Ah, uh, we. Ah, uh, yeah, that is true. I mean, for this command, we might not be an administrator, but to execute a uh, few commands, we actually need admin privileges. Otherwise, uh, we cannot, uh, you know, execute a few commands. But the 
So, it is preferable to actually launch it as an admin. Yeah. And then we can do things like changing password. So, right now uh, I have set a long password, I want to change it. Yeah, I, I could run this command net user administrator, I mean net user, and this is the username and the new password. That would actually change the password. And uh, to test it, we can exit the session and log in with the new credentials, and the PS session with the new credentials. Uh, that is some simple stuff and setting the computer name. There is a, a command called set computer name. This would actually uh, set the computer name itself. So, when, when you use the set computer name and the new computer name, that would actually change the name of the computer. And uh, we can uh, send restart commands using the regular shutdown command, shutdown slash r slash t. And uh, we can add new host add the new host ok. So, when we change the computer name then again we have to add it to the trusted hosts uh, to, to make it work unless we are logging in using the IP address. And we can do things like checking the resolution and changing the resolution you know we can use the command set display resolution and we can get the network adapter, adapter info using the get adapter info. Uh, no, no. These are actually not PowerShell commands, uh, but these are PowerShell IoT core commands, you can say, because these only work in the IoT core, Windows 10 IoT core. Yeah. And uh, there is another interesting command called IoT startup, you know, we will see uh, in a bit, and it has a lot of uh, interesting things that we can do like we can control the applications that we have installed, we can actually launch the applications, delete them, you know we can list all the applications and uh, we can do a lot of other things using the, uh, this command. And uh, we can run the IOD startup help to see various commands that we can execute and you know what all we can achieve from there. And there is another interesting command which I found is the screen capture. When I run screen capture and uh, give a path, what it will do is it will take a screenshot of the Raspberry Pi at that point of time and it will store the image in the you know new path that we gave. Uh, now, let us uh, quickly go to the PowerShell and execute a few of these commands and see how they work. So, we have seen the path wherein uh, we logged into the PowerShell remoting right. First we create a credential object and uh, then uh, use enter ps session command, pass the computer name and the credential object and then enter the PowerShell session, PowerShell remoting session and uh, let us uh, check this command IOT startup. So, uh, now it, it shows a lot of uh, examples and you know the commands that we can execute. Uh, if let us try the first one I want to start a list. So, when I do that it is actually listing all the applications that are already there on my Raspberry Pi. If you notice these are the same applications that we saw in the dashboard yeah and uh, you see something called headed you know and headless. The main uh, the meaning is headed means uh, the applications that have a UI which means you can actually see the UI in the display you know when we run the applications you can see something happening on the display. And headless means those are the background applications which uh, you can actually access from PowerShell or you know some other applications, but they don't have the UI. So you can do things like run my application or stop my application. Yeah, let us try this command of uh, running an application and see if it is actually running or not on my Raspberry Pi. So, I have the list of applications now, let us uh, try to run the hello world app.
error failed to activate ok there was some issue let us try the power pi it, it could also fail maybe some issue with the applications let me uh, okay, let's try to conclude this quickly let me go back to my uh, dashboard here if see we can actually you know execute the uh, execute the applications from here itself uh, for example if i want to execute my hello world application i just click on it and now it is executing and uh, my display has changed here you, you can see the display you know it has a couple of buttons basically hello world i can actually control and click my uh, buttons right. so the application is running and i can also set that as a default application uh, if i do this then whenever my raspberry pi boots it, it would launch this you know as a first first thing uh, we only can have one default app. Yeah. So, and I can actually stop this thing. You could actually all do all these operations from PowerShell itself, but for some reason now, you know, uh, they're not working fine. Do you see many problems like this? Not really. Uh, I have not faced these issues when I was trying at home, but I don't know what changed. When I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, if we have time, I would quickly want to try out some other demo. Yeah, we have five minutes. So let me uh, try a demo uh, where we, wherein we connect a different set of sensors. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it should be possible. Yeah, because uh, from the Visual Studio, we can we are actually. Uh, we, we can even push the application to the Raspberry Pi itself, right? From there itself, we can execute the thing and we can see all the logs. You know what? Uh, yeah. Live debugging, I think, should be possible with the latest version. Yes. I have not tried that, but. Uh,
Uh, sorry, uh, we are actually out of power, so let me quickly show the. We are already set away, and so this is the uh, two sensor here. Yeah. When I am clicking here, it is making sound. So there is an application called Button Buzzer application, one of my samples. So I just executed the application, and I have connected two sensors here, button and uh, you know the buzzer, which actually makes the sound. So this is uh, something that we can relate to the real world scenarios wherein. Let us say you, you want to set some security alarm kind of thing and you know here we are triggering the alarm through a button but in the real time scenario you can put some other sensor for example like uh, someone opening uh, some important uh, door or you know someone uh, op opening your maybe you know, uh, you know the place where you store, store all your money or valuable stuff. So you can actually use this kind of applications there and we can actually uh, install them on the Raspberry Pi and you know we, we can control them from PowerShell remotely and th the possibilities are actually limitless and you know you can do a lot of stuff using IoT and um, yeah, I, th I think the existing samples are really useful to start with and uh, we get these simple to connect sensors and uh, yeah if, if you are really interested in trying some something interesting. I think you can go with the Raspberry kit that comes. Uh, Microsoft also is providing Raspberry kit with you know the sensors together. Uh, this is one of them actually, the seed sensor kit which we got at one of the Microsoft events as as a prize. But yeah, which means that Microsoft also has the kits, and you can try out stuff and uh, you know do interesting things. Uh, with that, I would conclude my presentation. Uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, it yeah, they have to be physically connected to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are many other uh, scenarios wherein you can actually uh, place the sensors in a remote location. For ex for example, agricultural. Uh, yeah, there are things like you know, uh, sense there are sensors uh, sensing the soil quality. So you hold the sensors there and you keep one gateway there which, which collects the data from all the sensors and that will in turn send the data, consolidated data to your own application which you can monitor from your laptop. Uh, it should be possible but uh, again it has its own limitations on uh, you know on the hardware level. Right, if you want to really go on a bigger scale, you need to have bigger hardware. Raspberry Pi is more useful for you know uh, small smaller projects.
any, any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I, I think I think when we talk about the software part, it should be generic. It's the software we are we have created an application and we pushed it to Raspberry Pi and did some configuration changes which are relevant to the Raspberry Pi. But if your main code, I, I think the software should not change a, 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 as the software itself. Yes. Yeah, the configuration should change. Uh, there are no other questions. We would close now, and I think we would have some lunch outside. So, yeah, feel free to have, and uh, we will call it a day. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank